So we're back for a little test of a water cooler from MSI, the Corelliquid i360. It's life, it's work, can it cool your processor in silence? Well, we're going to find out right after this little break. Let's go. So, a small change that isn't really a change for the channel's sponsor. You probably know Goggle24, which has been supporting the channel for almost two years now, and well, now we're shifting to KissFan, which is another site from the same company, but it's exactly the same thing. So you can find the classics as well as the same promo codes and discounts with Windows 10 Pro Keys for under $9 and Windows 11 Pro Keys for under $14 with the channel code VCG50. And for Office Keys or the Windows Plus Office Packs, you get a 62% discount with the code VCG62. Regarding payment, the process is explained at the bottom of the offer page, which will allow you to choose your payment method by card or PayPal. And when you receive the keys up there by email with the instructions for using them, don't forget to check that the email is not in your spam directory just in case. If you encounter any issues, don't hesitate to contact customer service, which is available seven days a week and 24 hours a day, and they will assist you as quickly as possible. All the links are in the video description, and as usual, thank you if you purchase a key, because it helps support the channel, which largely survives thanks to this partnership, while also giving you something in return. So a big thank you for your support, and to KissFan for sponsoring this video. So it's been a little while since we tested one, a little cooling system on the channel since the latest one was the Arctic Freezer 36, which was quite nice considering its price and still is. But with the release of new generation of processors from AMD and Intel, I thought it would be interesting to see how different systems perform on the latest processors. And MSI kindly lent me this Corelliquid i360, so it allows us to see how it performs on the latest Core Ultra or the 9800X3D. The Core series hasn't always had the best reputation with issues of freezing on some older models like the Mac 240R and 360R, so MSI had mentioned before releasing a V2 range which seems to be more robust overall. They're not the only brands to have encountered this kind of issue. For example, with Arctic, the Liquid Freezer 2 also had its share of issues. The most important thing, most of the time, is how the brand handles the situation. As for MSI, there were a few hiccups that ended with a recall. And so far for these Core Liquid E, the feedback doesn't seem to indicate any particular problems. I hope that will be the case in the long run in terms of the range for the bodies, the cuties. So we have models in black or white in 240 or 360, which means with two or three fans. And regarding the pump, it features a design with a big block with a mirror finish, infinity effect and RGB lighting. So as always, a look like this will either appeal to you or not. It's a matter of taste. But it's true that in a case with an infinity mirror theme, the block will do the job quite nicely. I think the look is pretty nice. The same goes for the fans. They also have RGB and they're all connected by default. And you just have to plug in the 4-pin PWM connector as well as the RGB connector. And a nice little touch, there's a small cover that runs the entire length of the radiator to hide the cables. I think it's a really good idea, so that's a plus for MSI. As for the pump cables, they're also quite neat there. And the cables are bundled together with a length of 30 centimeters. That's more than enough. At least if the connectors on your motherboard are both at the top of it. But if that's not the case, you'll have to use an adapter instead of having to cut the sleeve. Since if your RGB connector is underneath, for example, since it's bundled with the fan connector, you'll need to split it up. And of course, we really don't want to do that. The water cooling tubes are sleeved. They are about 40 centimeter long. If you install the water cooling on the top or the front of the case, there shouldn't be any particular issues. However, at the bottom of the case, it could be a little more complicated. According to the case, the radiator is 27 mm thick and nearly 40 cm long, so it's a standard size for this format. And it's true that overall the presentation is quite nice. In terms of the bundle, instead of the usual small bags of screws, we have a little hard plastic packaging with a plastic film that keeps the different elements in place. Everything is labeled on the film in question, which allows you to only take what you need, depending on your platform. The compatibility across platforms is also quite good since it goes from LGA 1150 in 1851, so all relatively recent Intel platforms as well as the M4 and M5 for AMD platforms. The installation is pretty standard for Intel. We have a bracket to position at the back of the motherboard where we screw in spacers. And finally, in the water block with four screws for M4 and M5, there are two options. Or also by using the back plate of the platform by adding the spacers at the bottom just like for Intel or by using the mounting clips that are on the motherboard, which are usually used for AMV coolers. And now you need to screw the clips onto the water block. Well, personally, I much prefer the system with three to four screws, but at least I'd say there's a choice depending on what you prefer. Well, in short, overall, on the bundle and physically speaking, I have big thing to point out, it's standard, it's well done. 
The installation is very simple. Let's take a look now at the performance levels. So I wanted to do things a bit differently this time. We're always going to see how it performs between 250 and 150 watts. Manage on the 14700 case. But we're also going to see how it performs on the body. Ultra 265 case on default settings as well as with the 9800X3D, 7800X3D and 9600X. So first off, regarding the fans at the bottom, the liquid cooler can spin quite fast. Since at 100%, we're a bit over 2200 RPM. So it's pretty close to the freezer. Thermal rights perspective at this level. However, in terms of noise, even though it spins at the same speed, we can see that the fans of the liquid cooler are definitely much quieter. And overall, I was quite pleasantly surprised by the performance of the liquid cooler at this level. So clearly at 100% it can be heard quite well, but it's not exactly a hairdryer. The pump is also quite discreet, and we can see that at lower rotation speeds it is also relatively quiet. Aside from heavy loads, it should go pretty well. So we're starting the performance test with the 14700K at 200 VBW of power. And well, we can see that the liquid cooler is managing to hold up pretty well. This one is doing quite well, which is good news as it has pretty good performance. Since until now, only the freezer vision was able to do this, but it produced more noise in the process. The fans, on the other hand, we can see that it was definitely much more complicated, especially under 100% rotation speed. But well, the 14700K at full throttle, it's still a processor that's very, very power hungry, very energy intensive, and it's going to heat up. When we limit it to 200 Ws of power consumption, well, it handles it without any issues since it was already pretty okay at 250 W. And we see that even at 25%, the liquid body here does not encounter any major problem. It will cool silently, where the air coolers would definitely be much louder. And at 150 W of power consumption, well, there are no issues. It handles it smoothly. And we can see that at this level of power consumption, the air coolers will also do the job. Even though, of course, the Freezer 36 at 25% rotation speed struggles a lot more, which is completely normal given its size. And on top of that, usually at Arctic, the fans don't spin not very, very, very fast on their cooling system. If we now look at how it goes with the Core Ultra 7 265K, I no longer have the Freezer Vision and Phantom Spirit since I had given them away. So we can see that the Core Liquid is handling the Core Ultra without too many problems, which consumes 240W under load. It's a bit lower than the 14700K, but it's still relatively similar at full throttle. So it handles it, where the little Freezer 36 will struggle with intensive tasks, with this processor, and it's too early, no surprises here. So, even though the very latest Intel processors are more efficient than the 13th and 14th generations, under full load, especially with hyper-intensive multi-core tasks, they are still processors that can consume a lot. So we will always prefer to use an appropriate cooling system. Here, a small air cooler like the Freezer 36 will be insufficient for the heaviest loads. Next, we move over to AMD with the 9800X3D, which does heat up quite a bit under full load since cooling the Ryzen processors isn't necessarily easier than the Intel Core ones. With AMD processors, generally we have a, a small, quite dense surface that will heat up a lot, which won't be the case for everything. I would say the surface to cool, and that's something we encounter, especially since, for example, the 5800X, the 7700X, and so on, which are sometimes a bit more complicated. Cooling even processors with more heat, but we can see that the liquid cooler manages to cool without too much trouble here. Even though at 25% rotation speed for the air coolers, it becomes a bit more complicated for the Freezer 36. On the other hand, it will heat up quite quickly, so even though it might be enough for everyday use. And gaming, when the 9800X3D is heavily used, the Freezer 36 will have a little trouble holding it. But nothing really disturbing apart from rendering video 24-7, which is generally not really what you do with this type of processor. The um, 7800X3D, on the other hand, was definitely much less power hungry and also ran a lot cooler, so it's definitely even easier to cool for the liquid cooler here. And we can see that even the Freezer 36 was more than enough for the 7800X3D. It was really very, very easy to cool, much easier than the 9800X3D. And for the Ryzen 9 1600X at stock settings, so at 65W, I would say the 110W mode might be a little more complicated, but still, no problem for both cooling systems, even though at 25% rotation speed, it starts to heat up. For the Freezer 36, where the core liquid will hit a maximum of 70 degrees, so that's definitely manageable. So in short, from a performance standpoint, performance, so the core liquid i360 is really quite good, it can even handle the processors, very power hungry, but without making a crazy noise. So it's still pretty solid at that level. Of course, for less power hungry processors or those that run cooler, there is no need to necessarily take an IO360. Aside from looking for a specific look, since even though the performance is quite good, the core liquid still costs a fair bit here. It's often between 130 and 140 euros. It's clearly not the most affordable cooling system. 
Afterwards, there are also I.O. much more expensive than this one, but I would say that if you like the look of this core liquid, why not? There is nothing wrong with it from the point of view of its performance. And aside from the price, I would say that for me, the biggest weak point of these liquid coolers is the warranty, which is only three years. That's not a lot for an AIO. From a big brand, I would say the standard is more around five years. So that's pretty disappointing in that regard. I would really like MSI to extend its warranty to at least five years. Because it's true that three years for an AIO, we know that water cooling is generally less reliable than a heatsink, of course. Five years seems reasonable to me. The minimum three years really isn't much. So it's up to you to decide if, despite the little negative points I've just mentioned, it meets your needs or not. Because I would say that from a performance standpoint, there's not much to say. It really does the job quite well. It's pretty quiet. It's fairly easy to install. It's well presented. It's quite clean. I would say that apart from the warranty, which is for me really the biggest point, the downside is low. The rest is pretty good. And then, so that's it for me for today, as usual. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, the annoying stuff, YouTube, it's stupid, but it helps. And if you're looking for ideas on current graphics cards, you can find that on the channel's Amazon page, which you'll see in the video description. And as always, a big thank you to the Kofi and YouTube supporters of the channel for their contributions. It always gives a nice boost, both morally and financially. And we'll see each other very soon for more videos. Sending you kisses. See you next time. Bye.